I think we've got our group here. Uh, it is past five o'clock. The door, um, Maria is back. So we will call the uh, December 1st, 2022 meeting of the Historic Preservation Commission to order. Can we have the roll, please? Yes. Chairman Lane. Here. Commissioner Sibley. Here. Commissioner Barnard. Here. Commissioner Gayu. Here. Commissioner Goon. Here. Commissioner Jacoby. Here. Council Member Rodriguez. Here. Thank you. Great. So we do have a quorum. Uh, we'll move on to approval of the October 6, 2022 meeting minutes. Do any commissioners have any corrections or comments regarding those? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Okay, I've got a motion to approve the minutes by Commissioner Barnett, seconded by Commissioner Gayu. All those in favor? Um, say, I raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. The minutes are approved in a, unanimously. Okay. Uh, report from the chair. Uh, I don't have anything in particular personally here, but I do uh, would like to take the opportunity to recognize uh, Commissioner Goon, who unfortunately is uh, on her last meeting here. So. We, uh, we want to thank you for your time on the commission, and uh, I really do appreciate the, um, the, the, the often sort of, sort of counterpoint arguments that you brought and some different perspectives. It's been, it's been very good to have you here, and we'll, we will miss you. Now, let me go ahead and give you the mic here. Well, thank you very much. I was going to have closing comments thanking all of you. I've learned so much about all of this, um, you know, housing and architecture and uh, historical preservation, all of that. And I've, I've learned so much from all of you, and it's been a pleasure to serve here. Thank you. Great. Thanks. I do have a little certificate of appreciation, so if you want a little photo op, we can do that right up front. It seems to be the thing that people like doing. <laughs> Okay, next on our agenda would be communications from HPC staff liaison. Good evening. Um, I do have some additional items that will come up during uh, prior business. Um, however, just as a quick update, um, we are finally have some staff on board and um, so I will be able to pay more attention to historic <laughs> preservation and first order of business will be to put together a grant application for a, for a survey plan um, to get that, to try and make some progress on that. So still getting, you know, one person is still starting next week, I think, a couple weeks. So, but we do have one, a new senior planner on board. So we're throwing her into the deep end on development review. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> So yes, so hopefully that should start to free up some of my time so I can put much more focus on historic preservation. So that's, I think, excellent news for all of us. It is. So, and we did have an additional, we have had an inquiry about landmarking a property. I don't know if that's going to go anywhere, but it, um, so stay tuned on that one. That's pretty much all I have under just the general HPC communication. Okay, wonderful, thank you. Um, any commissioners have questions for staff at this moment? All right, great, thanks. Okay, um, 
I don't have the list, but this is uh, public invited to be heard. So if there is anyone in the audience who would like to come up and um, offer a comment, do we, do, we, do we have anyone out there? Well, and <laughs> Okay. Good evening, Historic Preservation Commission. Oh. You don't think they can hear me? Come on. I reset you. Thank you. Good evening, Historic Preservation Commission. Sharon O'Leary, 534 Emory Street. Sorry I wasn't here in October. I thought we both needed a vacation mm -hmm. from one another. But then you stood me up last month. Well, regardless. While I was on vacation, I could not stop thinking about you. I was in Yellowstone National Park staying at the Old Faithful Lodge. It was magnificent, and the entire time, I kept thinking how thankful I was of past generations that had the foresight and took responsibility to ensure preservation. Old Faithful Lodge exterior represents the time period, and the interior is a work of art. The preservation and care that has gone into that structure ensures that many generations to come will be able to enjoy its beauty. Preservation is vital. Without it, we wouldn't have national parks, national forests, open space, historical buildings, churches, cathedral, small quaint homes, majestic buildings, and historical neighborhoods. A few weeks ago, neighbors were cleaning out the home where their father lived, and he too was a preservationist in the historic east side. They gave me a box of papers and documentations from the founding years and reminded me of how we preserved the Henna neighborhood. Back when then, we were citizens for a sensitive revitalization. Our neighborhood formed because in 1961, Longmont City Council did not give the east side the same zoning as the historic west side. Our neighborhood received a combination zoning of R3 and R4 that allowed up to four unit development in certain sections of our neighborhood. And then in 1967, high density residential use permitted throughout the entire neighborhood, despite the fact that 80% of the housing was single family. After years of working and meeting on committees with city staff and council, we basically did the heavy lifting and received our RLE zoning. So here we are today, one year from when city council instructed planners to come back with some sort of historic preservation guidelines, but not on the same level as historic designation. Our neighborhood gave the city planners a complete guideline and to this day, nothing has happened. There is a proposal that's being worked on that would be a blanket zoning for the historic east side and west side, but that's doomed the day it comes off the printer. The east side has been preserved for close to 40 years. The west side has a different vision. We helped save the Carnegie Library when the city was selling it for a dollar. Then we reused these signs to make signs for in front of homes for carriage rides that ran the week before Christmas for the next six years. We are preservationists. What I'm asking you to do tonight is to please make a motion and, and second it and ask to have a conservation overlay zone for the historic east side and send it to city council. You have the ability to preserve. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no one else in the audience, we'll go ahead and close the public invited to be heard and move on to new business, um, which is planning for the coming year. Good evening, uh, Chairman. Um, so this is just an item really to start thinking about um, 2023. So um, moving forward in terms of priorities for the year, um, wanted to pose the question of um, how you would prefer to go about setting your priorities. <laughs> okay. How you would go about, wanted to go about setting your priorities, um, whether it be in a regular, regular meeting or 
doing a retreat. We haven't done, this commission has not done uh, a really focused planning retreat since 2021. So um, wanted to present that item um, to, to the commission for consideration and to discuss um, as a business, as basically a business item to discuss. Um, another option, another item that would, could be, should be considered either as part of an agenda or part of a retreat would basically be a refresher on open meeting rules, et cetera, as we have new commissioners coming on board. Um, and just really kind of refresh everyone on kind of what the rules and guidelines are. And, and, and that could either be incorporated into a, into a meeting with our city attorneys coming to just kind of brush everyone up on that or as part of a larger retreat. So um, wanted to pose those suggestions and questions to the board for discussion. Or to okay. the commission, I should say. <laughs> right. Um, I, as, as always, I have my own opinions, but I'll defer to the commission to, uh, if anybody's got any thoughts or questions, yeah. Commissioner Barnett, uh, let me get you there. Oh, go ahead. Where are you? Hello? No, you are seat three, so. Uh, the other button. There you go. Thank you. Um, I uh, took a look at the, uh, when I first came out, uh, took a look at the retreat minutes of, and I've, from 2021, and I've just found them to be extremely valuable. And I think uh, uh, I've always been in favor of those, of those types of ways of dealing with planning issues, of taking the, because it takes time to do something like that. And it's a big time, it's a big time investment, but I think it produces good results. Um, the only thing I would ask is that if we do something like that, that we have come out with, we, we came out with clear points in the, in the 2021 re retreat, and I'd like to just see that that, how that the points be f extended a little bit with timelines on them, uh, because there were like seven or eight points, but you know when would we do each one, and when would we accomplish each one? Because there's no way we can accomplish all of them at the next meeting. That's that's and so some of them just get get laid aside until some time when they just might come up again in, in the course of business. But if it's part, so part of a plan of a retreat, I would support would be one that had specific timelines coming after it. Thank you. Other commissioner. I'd certainly be in favor of a retreat if we can all get together and make a time. I think between the goofiness of the interruptions of, you know, the pandemic and then new staff and most, you know, many new commissioners, I think it would be really valuable to just kind of sit back, re refocus, plot out some courses of action and, and have some resources available to guide those courses of action when we say, well, we'd like to do this, and somebody says, well, it can't look like that. It has to be, you know, to be steered one way or the other so that we we're, we can be effective. I think that would be very valuable. So if we can, if we can, uh, what, what, so what would be the, the, I mean, we'll have a meeting the first part of January. That's typically the, you know, who, who's new, new officers, new, you know, ratify the bylaws, so on and so forth. So I would say sometime, you know, late January or at the latest in February would be an appropriate time to, to have that happen. That seems reasonable. I'll, um, I can work with Maria and we'll see if we can identify meeting space and such and come up with some possible dates. It seems like the last one was May, and I don't know if there was any magic to that, or that's just what worked out. Yeah, I think it just took that long, you know, to All get right. every. Uh, yeah, so earlier would be better. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's what I've got on that. Great, thank you. Any other comments on coming up? Nope. All right. Okay. Um, well, let's go on to uh, talking about a few things from past business. Um, 
update on uh, commissioner interviews, I guess. And for those, I will um, recuse myself since I was one of the interviewees. So I think that means, Commissioner Gayu, you have the floor as the, uh, co the vice chair of the meeting. Those interviews, I'm not sure what I could say about them. Is there someone who attended those interviews? <laughs> I, will, I will give you the, the floor. <laughs> Well, uh, one candidate was uh, moved himself from the list uh, before our uh, interviews. One candidate was unavailable for the interviews, so we had two candidates for two positions. And um, they both have experience already, and I think they were both uh, well received, but I haven't heard the official uh, rules, uh, the determination as far as uh, than the board this year, commission. Sure, so staff, me, I um, forwarded the recommendations of the uh, interview committee to the, the city clerk's office. So um, Commissioner Lane and Commissioner Barnard, you should be either, if you haven't received an invitation for council interviews, um, you should one should be forthcoming. So we did recommend that council interview both of you for um, a regular commission, the full commissioner position. Um, Mr. Fenster was unable to attend um, his interview, um, but we did interview him back in May as part of the um, mid-year um, nomination cycle. And um, we did find him to be qualified as well, so we did uh, um, recommend that he be considered and interviewed for the alternate position so that we would have an alternate. And I think council is doing the interviews on next Saturday, not this coming Saturday. Um, and then it'll be on a council agenda, and they'll make appointments. On a, and that'll be in December. I'm not sure what that agenda is, but... I believe that's December 10th. 10th? Okay. Right. Okay. Ah. You should be receiving them at some point soon, because I know I know I know Michelle was frantically putting everything together this week. So. Okay. Great. So there is no real action here, right? This is just no, a discussion these are item. Discussion items. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Well, unless anyone else has any other comment, we'll move on. Um, so um, that includes everyone that's here. Obviously, Commissioner Norton is absent, but she's still on the commission. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner Goon's seat would then be filled by M Mr. Lester as an alternate? Fenster. Or Fenster, sorry. Fenster. You're, you're Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I see. So you're... I'm the alternate right now. Uh, okay. And then Mr. Fenster would take mine, and then I would take uh, Terry's seat as the regular. Right. Okay, fair enough. Great. Okay. Um... Next item is the Dickens Barn. Uh, what do we have for new news on that? So still working on it. We are um, staff, and which I would be the staff, is reviewing the site plan and plat for this project. We are, um, the applicant is still planning to um, dedicate the barn and um, some adjacent properties um, to the city um, so that the barn can be um, preserved. Um, I'm still I'm working with our legal staff to determine the uh, best mechanism for doing that. So we're just working through the procedural issues at this point. So um, once all of that is is finalized, um, I, it would probably be in the first quarter upon 
you know, once the final plat is, fi is finalized, um, then we could look at pursuing additional um, grant opportunities to for the for the further rehabilitation and stabilization of the barn. Um, part of the dedication would include a, um, a basically a, a cash and lube dedication as well to um, specifically for stabilization work from the developer. Okay. So will we see them back here at all? Do they need to come back for any kind of a final approval? Yeah, ultimately you have to make a uh, action on, because the plant, well, ultimately the city council said, HPC has to pr uh, approve the preservation plan. We didn't really define what that is. So we do envision that um, you'll have to take an action on that. Okay. But, but that it's essentially a, more or less a done deal. The Parks and Rec has already accepted. We hope it's a done deal. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> a, okay. As done I as think done preserving gets. the barn would be the is the ultimate right. preservation plan right. from staff standpoint. Right. Okay. Questions from commissioners? No. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm, uh, is there any update on the status of the outbuildings and the rest of the property? I'm not, uh, last time I asked about that, that was still premature, but I was, have you made a determination on that? Well, the, the original farmhouse and um, some of the other outbuildings are underneath the future 7-Eleven, so um, they are going to go. And then I think the only other ones, there was a chicken check that I think is pretty much collapsed on itself. So um, as of now, it really leaves the barn um, that'll be preserved. So as you know, uh, what we originally presented, if, if we still want to do something symbolic for the original um, farmhouse, that potentially is something um, you could still consider. They were proposing outlining the foundation, I think, in the parking maneuvering areas. Um, and maybe doing a couple other things. Uh, I think there were some commissioners that thought, e, you know, that maybe that's not the best way to do it, but we can certainly discuss that when it comes before you. Okay. All right. Okay. Then let's uh, move on to the next item, which is uh, HPC code amendment status. And um, uh, it looks like we have a kind of outline from Glenn here to discuss. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and Commissioners. Um, recently, I had a conversation with Chairman Lane um, and talked about the code amendments, and we've had some good discussions with uh, Council um, in executive session and in public meeting, um, but I think I realized that maybe we shotgunned a whole lot of things at everybody, um, and it got to be maybe a bigger project than... Um, what we had originally or what HPC maybe originally envisioned. So I thought it might be a good idea to kind of go back to, um, I think it was 2021, and it started in the retreat where you were revising the code. Um, and I took directly from one of the agendas of your meeting what you felt were the major issues. Um, and then I thought I, I could walk through these and then say our, our attorney that worked on it identified some key legal issues, um, staff threw kind of our wants in there, and there were certainly some things that came out of council. So um, I'll walk through this. I, I, I thought I'd kind of lead you in a prioritizing uh, exercise to say what are the key things with the idea of let's maybe hit your really top items first. And then um, perhaps as we do a more overall, uh, uh, a more thorough overhaul of the land development code, we can do some of the other things. And then my tent is, I've talked to our city attorney about it. He thinks maybe it's a good idea. I'll go back to city council at some point and say, 
do you agree with this approach to address these things in this way? Um, maybe more of a, a smaller amendment, um, but I know I heard from HPC that you had some priorities, um, probably around demolition, um, but I thought uh, I kind of walked through this cheat sheet that I provided for you, I have up on the screen. Um, and the first thing was demolition by neglect. I didn't put these in any kind of order, so don't get biased by <laughs> what's number one. Um, but there was certainly a concern that um, just somebody neglecting their historic property would just um, succumb it to being torn down. So how do we kind of halt that? Um, uh, there was a feeling by HPC we need to define what's an extraordinary historic significance. Um, you know, that, that was a good call because our attorney said the same thing. We need more criteria of what is potentially historic. Um, we added in, uh, we do identify in our code right now, we talk about archeological significance, but we don't have a definition for that. Um, and the, I think the big one was revise the demolition review procedures. Um, right now, I think it says anything in the uh, original town site, and then the code also says, if we have a survey that identifies something is significant, um, outside that area that potentially it would go through a review process. And right now the code, the, the process is it gets reviewed by the liaison and a council member, um, which I think would be our council member Rodriguez, would look at that and decide whether that demolition should go up to the HPC or whether it's should, um, it's not significant enough and um, maybe should just be approved as far as for demolition. I think HPC thought it ought to really just go to the Historic Preservation Commission. So that's really, I think, the meat of that matter. Um, there was a question about city-owned properties and um, do the same process apply to them? I think we had recently gone through the silo designation um, that was brought forward by a uh, a resident. Um, uh, there was a concern by the HPC that maybe we restrict um, the ability to revoke your designation. Um, and if you're a landmark um, property, locally landmarked, you should stay that way. And there shouldn't really be a process to undo that. Um, that was one thing. Um, we didn't really address in our code enforcement or penalties if somebody uh, goes ahead and ignores um, the code and um, you know tears down a property that's uh, potentially been designated. And then I think there was something about notice of certified neighborhoods if we have a certificate of appropriateness or um, you're creating a new district or you're creating a landmark that we had widened the scope of that notice. Uh, I left a couple of blanks because maybe I missed a few. If some of you have uh, a better memory of that draft code or do you think that kind of hits the big ones? Thanks, I, I, think, I think that does, I think you had a really good summary of the demolition piece for sure. That I think that really captured at least what I recall from, from all those discussions. Right, uh, um, and some of the ancillary stuff is filled in in the time since, right? So what, what I recall from that, those earliest of meetings was uh, uh, the, the very first <laughs> item of importance was, was just revising this demolition um, code because at, at currently, it's a really low bar for somebody to take a building down, and once it's down, it's done. And and we felt like we wanted to get that bar raised up a notch or two or three. And so relative to demolition by neglect and the demolition review procedures and the associated enforcements and penalties, I think that's where, that's where this all started. Like, and then okay. other things have sort of conglomerated onto the process. <laughs> It's a definition of mission creep, I think, <laughs> maybe. 
Um, and part of that certainly is, um, well, we did uh, bring in outside counsel who identified some legal issues with our code the way it is right now, really having to do with due process, um, which was if I have a, a, a property that's in the original town site, it's 50 years old, I don't necessarily know that, and I don't know that there's potentially land use restrictions on it. So that started a whole nother train that was, how do you do that? Well, we do that normally through zoning, and that's where they created the uh, historic preservation overlay, so that um, in those areas, we'd create an overlay so that if we're rezoning your property, you're aware of what the rules are. Um, so it really grew quite a bit. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, they identified just being 50 years old maybe isn't enough. Uh, maybe it can be a little bit tighter as far as what those criteria are. And then we added on, oh, well, while we're at it, why don't we look at uh, the certificate's appropriateness and is there a staff level versus an HPC level? Um, and, and while we're at it, let's just move the whole thing into land development code because it's a, it's a land use process. So then we have this great big um, animal. So what I thought we'd do, and, and maybe it's not gonna take long, is what we normally do when we have a list like this with, with a group or a board, what are your top three? And um, what do you think would be as far as timing wise, the most important. Not that we're gonna ignore them all. Um, and then our hope is we can kind of come up with an idea of how to kind of move forward on those changes, um, talk to council about it and see if um, they're willing to go that direction. And then um, we could be very close to addressing some things. So you've got nine, eight, um, if you were to pick your top three, we can just go around the room and, and see what they are, if that is agreeable. Yeah. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, Commissioner Goon. I, I remember back in that, in that uh, retreat that we had when we were talking about demolition by neglect, one of my major concerns was um, um, East Side Historic Neighborhoods are, is a, it's a, it had been an affordable neighborhood. Um, so you've got a lot of, you, had, you do have a lot of poverty there. I live there and I owned my home forever before I could fix the foundation. Um, so I, I'm, <clears throat> I'm not quite sure how that reads, you know, when we're talking about a, a developer purposefully neglecting an old shed in the backyard that they don't want to use anymore and they want to tear it down, and so they think that they can get away with something versus somebody who just can't afford to fix the old shed, and they're kind of waiting until life changes, and the, you know it becomes the priority. The kids are out of the house or whatever it is, and so that one really bugs me, I, and I, I know I'm leaving, <laughs> but <laughs> that one really bugs me <laughs> because I live there. It's, it's been my life. I, I pay for things as I go along. I, I save up money and then fix them, but priorities are always, you're constantly balancing them, and for us as a commission to determine because you live in this house, we get to set your priorities bothers me. So just FYI. Okay. And, and I might add, there's nothing to say you can't come to one of these meetings <laughs> and express your opinion during any of these processes. So please, you are welcome back. Uh, <laughs> Commissioner Barnard, uh, I get your mic Looking on. at this summary and also looking back at the May 5th memo on um, what the uh, commission's ideas were May 5th of 2022, and then also my memory of the retreat and also the recent joint meeting with city council. Demolition seemed to be uh, a fairly big deal. Um, and it was the one where there didn't seem to be good communication back and forth between the city and the staff and the, and the uh, commission. So I'd say that if we want to start, I would rather than have three things, I think we there's enough under the issue of demolition whether it's here you've, you've got demolition procedures include original town site, remove liaison and council member review, 
In the May memo, you talk about demolition permit review, applicability, procedure, and criteria. That's, I mean, that alone, I think, would take through the end of the year to resolve just because it's tough. They're tough issues. And I think if you, if you try to, my feeling is if you try to tack on more stuff, then we'll lose our focus on what appears to have been a major issue for us for, for the last several years. Thank you. Other commissioners? Pressure, and then I can get you. Yeah. Okay. All right, Commissioner Guy. Um, I mean, I've I've been on the commission for I don't even know ten, magically for like ten years now. I don't know how that happened, but um, I when when we were talking about that when this when I came onto the <laughs> onto the commission. So it's been a long, long time, and and I would say I mean. To be honest, I think under the enforcement and penalties part of it, you could also just, you know, bracket a lot of these demolitions because that's kind of the heart of it is, you know, the demolition by neglect, the procedures, the oversight of it is a big part of it is that, you know, if you tear your house down, it costs like $50. It's like a $50 fine. <laughs> even if it's on the national register, it's just, you know, and locally designated and everything else. It just, you know, until we have a piece where there's actually some consequences for doing that sort of thing, it's, it's you know, we can put all the codes, you know, and definitions of demolition mind neglect, which generally speaking is, is never going to be somebody, you know, not painting their house in time. It's going to be, yeah, a developer buys a house, Let's it sit there for a couple of years till it falls down so that they can scrape it. Um, so for me, that the number one issue would be the enforcement and penalties, which would actually bring some action. Thank you. Yeah. Sibley or? Yeah. All right. Actually. Oh. Or me? Hold that thought. <laughs> sorry. Oh, try it. See, it's like red means go instead of green. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, no, I was going to say uh, that, yeah, demolition is sort of the top thing, too, because really, once those places are gone, they're gone. And um, so, yeah, I think that is probably biggest on my list. Um, but I don't know how in going through those kinds of things, like with the overlays and the zoning and all those kinds of things, I would imagine that all has to tie together. So in my head, I'm like, okay, <laughs> there's your basket. <laughs> it's full. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So I guess I'm, I'm with everybody here with the demolition as kind of being the priority. So okay, Thank you. Uh, okay, Commissioner Jacoby. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I agree. Demolition should be number one. It's just, just, yeah, irreplaceable loss is our priority before we get the rest of our uh, stuff in order here. So re uh, revising demolition review procedures, I think, is definitely important. Demolition by neglect is a very thorny issue. Properties rights, I agree with Terry, is very important. But I do know, um, again, there was a property on Atwood about... 10 years ago, um, uh, one of the original colony homes that was stripped down to basically framing and then left for two years. And then they decided, well, we got to build something here. And uh, because what they had was no longer usable. And so demolition by neglect is a definite issue. I think it's thorny, but I think it can be worked around. But that, it's such a big issue right there. How do you define that? Getting the lawyers involved. That, that making that part of it is, is going to be, uh, yeah, uh, that's going to be enough for you to chew on. But again, enforcement and penalties is part of that because, you know, uh, if we don't have reasonable teeth behind all this, everything you put on paper is kind of, they'll, they'll laugh it off. And getting back to that includes revocation of designation. I think you could make a simple penalty uh, for rev revocation of designation. I, I, I don't know what amount that would be, but I think we could just include that. And that, that wouldn't take a lot of brain power. 
um, and that would give a little teeth to people maintaining their historic designation. Um, again, I think uh, when we looked at that uh, subdivision of the, the farm property a couple of months ago, we had really no say in it because they could just revoke their designation and subdivide if we didn't agree to some sort of plan for them. I think if we had a little bit of teeth behind revocation uh, with a little bit of a penalty at least of some kind, I think that would uh, help out. So I think all of those are kind of intertwined and connected, but that would be more than enough. Right now, revocation's in your purview. That, that is something that has come through HPC. It's, it's not something somebody can just decide and let it go. Um, what they were asking uh, on the property that um, Jennifer worked on is, can we move those buildings? They were moving historic buildings, right? So, yeah, they're, um, once you're designated, they have to come back to you. I think what the uh, HPC was thinking is, let's, let's shut that door. <laughs> perhaps, if somebody's a landmark. Um, so that would be a change. That'd be a pretty serious change. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, I would just wrap up by saying, again, I think if, if you're gonna, obviously you see the demolition is the big one. It was what started this all, as I mentioned, and that I don't know that you can parse out anything associated with demolition and handle only that. You, you just have to take on the pieces that include demolition. So that means talking about demolition by neglect, talking about the review procedures, talking about the enforcements and penalties, and coming up with a comprehensive direction for that um, component, right? And, and I think if we, can, if we can do that as a focus and we can get some surveys, grant surveys, grants for surveys started, and then have a retreat. It feels like we have the retreat can handle the bigger pictures because we're not going to handle. We're not going to. We're not going to make an. You know, we're not going to create an overlay district tonight. <laughs> it's not. Gonna, it's not going to happen. It, that's a huge project um, that needs public involvement. But if we can get some direction on the demolition piece and really dial that into what we. We want to accomplish, and then there's been a lot of work that's been done already. So I think it's really circling back, putting this together, understanding what what city attorney perspective is on what, what has already been drafted, and then getting this commission to to refocus on it. I think that I don't know that it should take you know a massive amount of time, right? Yeah, and I think the key to the demolition is refining that criteria too. So that was kind of part of my discussion with um, our uh, city attorney, May. Um, so I, I think we could do something a bit scaled down that would address the, um, the demolition part of it. But again, we, we have had this discussion with council. Um, I'll return some way back to them and see if um, they agree with that direction and will hopefully address the demolition um, uh, much quicker than the whole rewrite and moving it into the land development code. Right. That was going to be my question. This would not be, this would not involve any kind of move into the land use code at this point. We just, do we just revise the mind. ordinance and that's right. it for now? Yeah. In, in my mind, I'd still work within that uh, chapter 2.5 of, uh, of the municipal code where it is now. But I, I appreciate the conversation, and it helps me because I was just coming in as you were doing that. Um, so um, I'm just going back through notes without any flavoring to it, trying to figure out what was key. So um, it did kind of blossom into a very big project. So um, I think this might help us um, get off the dime and um, at least um, address, I think, your principal concern. So I appreciate that. Great, thank you. Any other commissioner questions or comments on this? Perfect, thank you. Oh, yes. All right, commissioner Goon. Um, I would also recommend uh, incentives. We, you know, we don't, I, I'm not creative enough to come up with what people want or what they like other than money, you know, which we have the tax incentives. So, um, you know, something that, that would 
make people want to not demolish their homes. You know, carrots. Thanks. All right. Thank you. All right, Commissioner Barnett. Yes. Um, one thing I think would be helpful to me, and since uh, you're in the early stages of preparing what you're going to do here, is if um, we had some comparables. Um, we don't have to necessarily invent the wheel. We have an old code. A lot of codes have been revised since then. Neighborhood, county, other other cities in the county that might have uh, specific uh, ideas that they've perhaps more recently adopted into their codes. Um, and just going through this briefly, I just saw that Boulder has a, a one-page explanation of what a demolition is. It's one page with pictures. Uh, and if it meets that criteria, it's a demolition. Uh, then it probably has a lot of other words to go along with it, but it seems pretty simple. We don't have, I don't, I don't think we need to limit ourselves to the county. There might be some you know, smart cities out there that you might know about, or sure. that uh, uh, like Austin, Texas, or, or uh, Madison, Wisconsin, or others that are comparable cities that uh, have been through this process. I know it doesn't take much searching online to find a lot of historical preservation code references. Uh, and I think it would be helpful going in if we saw what you're proposing and how it fits in with what the general uh, tone of these types of solutions is. Uh, not that we can't do something unique, but let's see where we are with respect to others. Uh, because those others have also survived the, the private partnership and the, the, and, the, and the public partnership issues uh, to get where they were. Uh, sure, yeah, we're certainly not unique, but I think just about every city in Colorado at least has a historic preservation requirements. Yeah, thank you. And and I, I do remember that I think Planner Schumacher had brought, uh, had, had, he had, had, he had a we couple. Had a, yeah, we had like a whole list of Cool. Still has that somewhere? <laughs> We've done that already, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> at, at least in Colorado. Roll it back out again. <laughs> we, can, we can handle that. We can find something in a file. Right. M might be as much work to find it as to find it again, but that's how those things go. All right. Excellent. Thank you very Great. much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate the effort. Okay, we'll go ahead, unless there's any other comment. Yep. Uh, Just thinking okay. about uh, Terry's comment about carrots rather than sticks, um, which is always a, a much easier way to uh, approach things. Another carrot, uh, something I brought up m multiple meetings ago was the certificate of merit. And it's... It, uh, follows kind of the federal rules uh, as being making houses notable. And I know other cities, boulders use it a lot. Um, but if it had some carrots attached to it, maybe we can't give tax breaks the way uh, the rules are written, but maybe we could forgive permitting fees, city permitting fees uh, for in exchange for um, some control of uh, development of the house. So it's just, you know, but the certificate of merit, we could put some carrots in and use more because I don't think the city's used it very much here. I may be mistaken, but um, right now it's a worthless piece of paper that says, nice try, bucko, but your place isn't landmarked. And I think we could do something with that. Mm -hmm. So I like that idea. All right. Yeah, it's um, if you don't hit the landmark, then you get a certificate of merit. It's kind of, yeah. So basically a landmark light. <laughs> it is. Okay. Well, yeah. And I, yeah, I think we, we actually talked about giving someone, I can't remember, maybe maybe it was in a, I think actually it was somebody that we ended up, the commission decided to landmark, but there was discussion back and forth about whether it was worthy and it was sort of on the edge, and that was something that we were talking about as a, you know, potential stepping stone of encouragement or something. I mean, I think there's there's opportunity to throw that out there, discuss it, and try to figure out a way to, 
to, but it, it would be good to make it worth something more than just a nice try stamp, right? I mean, because everybody knows what the reality of that is. <laughs> All right, great. Thank you. Thank you for the comments. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, close that portion of the meeting. Um, and then we are on to just comments from the HPC commissioners. Commissioner Goon. Um, I'll just reiterate, it's been a pleasure working with you guys and getting to know you all a little bit. And um, it's it's been fun. Thank you for all of your knowledge and for listening to me. <laughs> Kindly. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Gayu. Uh, I was just wondering if you knew whether you were going to get any scholarships for the CPI conference in February for com commission members? Yeah, I'm sure we can. Okay. Um, we do have a pretty healthy budget as far as for training. So um, I don't, is that what we call them, scholarships for Well, the, you can actually apply for money to give scholarships to commission members for oh. registration fees. Yeah. Oh. So. Well, if we can't get money, okay. we'll, we'll find it. Okay. Is there, uh, an, is there maybe a possible headcount of people interested in the... Yes. Suzanne. Doug? In what? It's uh, History Colorado's... Um, Yeah, there's some fun ones and yeah. some very highly technical, yeah. let's talk about, you know, stucco. Yep. Commissioner Bart. Okay. One all of my right. first no, meetings, you, thanks, right. you took care of it. You keep doing me. that to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, one of my first meetings, there was a discussion of a uh, brochure, uh, and I know it went back to staff, and I know you've been short-staffed. And I think you used Louisville was one of the examples that the commission said they liked. Um, and I was just wondering, I haven't heard anything about that at the last few meetings, and I was just wondering where that stood as far as staff time, staff work. I remember, I think it was we were discussing a historic preservation plan um, of which Louisville has done, and then they've collapsed the major points into a, a handout. Um, so I think we need the plan first, um, and that's something that we are trying to find funding for um, through our CLG. So, but it's, it's definitely a good idea. And we did like, I think Louisville did a very good example of what a um, plan could look like. So the short answer is we haven't done anything, <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely on our to-do. Commissioner Jacoby. Here's the red light. All right. Um, uh, just to address Sharon O'Leary's concerns, I mean, she wants us to uh, make a motion for a conservation overlay zone for the historic east side. I've mentioned that before as a possibility, and we had the RLE1 zoning um, that was restrictive and did help preserve the neighborhood for a long time. Um, I think it'd be easy to, <laughs> seems easy to me, very being naive and not working through all the channels, but to just reinstate that until we get somewhere. But I think that would take energy and time away from making the larger conservation overlay that we are trying to work on. And we were, the last time it was presented, it was gonna be individual houses. And uh, in the joint meeting with city council, I think everybody agreed that this would be better in districts rather than houses. And I'm just wondering, do we have any update on when are we going to get another presentation on where that's going at, at or where is that at now? What, where is what? I'm sorry. I'm 
uh, the, the proposal to uh, make a conservation overlay of just of the individual houses was right. pretty much um, done okay. by everybody. But where is that at now? Are we looking at making districts? Uh, and uh, or should if we are looking at districts, I don't think we should pursue Sharon's suggestion as that would be uh, just taking time away and valuable resources from making better districts. But if we're not looking at districts, I think uh, what she requests has some merit and maybe we should pursue it. So I'm just wondering where that discussion is at now. Yeah, so that's where the historic preservation overlay came from. Right. Um, right. So, uh, and that's the reason why I want to have this discussion. We don't necessarily have to do that um, to initially address the demolition issue. Right. Now, our code does have uh, conservation districts, and it's really geared towards a neighborhood mm -hmm. that wants to put special rules in their neighborhood, and it requires a certain percentage of everybody to sign on to that. So that is a much bigger deal, and, and um, it, it is kind of geared towards um, a community doing that, working mm -hmm. on that, and not necessarily the city coming in and putting in a conservation district. So it is a much different animal. Um, now, uh, part of the code amendments were referencing design guidelines, and that's something we told mm -hmm. council we would do. Um, I think that addresses part of the issue, but um, there are some, yeah, some of these beginning code amendments that need to happen first. And then um, we do have money in the budget to do the design guidelines as far as appropriate additions in certain areas. Okay. All right. Well, um, it's maybe not as heavy-handed as a conservation district, but I think it's um, it it would probably address a lot of the issues. I think that right. are concerns. All right. I guess it depends on how you define the conservation overlay and what you put in it. You know how heavy-handed it gets. Um, maybe, maybe I'll talk to you some more about that again and after the meeting and and see where we can go with that. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. And I might just add, I think that's the perfect thing for a retreat, right? That's the perfect, so we can really talk just in a more fluid way, hash things out, talk about what directions the commission really wants to spend time on. So I hold on to it for sure. Yeah. Any other commissioner comments? No? All right, uh, I will just conclude again by thanking uh, Commissioner Goon for your time. I really do appreciate your time and your perspective. It's It's very good to have different perspectives on this commission. It makes it a, a richer um, end result. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> just getting my attention. You've been working me today. I've been hit, hitting this thing a lot tonight, so I just want to make sure I'm not missing anybody. Okay. Uh, comments from our city council representative. Uh, first of all, I would also like to Thank you. All right. With that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Moved by Commissioner Goon in her last act. Seconded by Commissioner Jacoby. All those in favor, say aye. Opposed, none. We are adjourned. Thank you all.